shopping basket. Well, hurry up. I want to get down to Magic Mountain Market as quickly as possible. <laughs> Why? So we can buy the nicest, freshest fruit and vegetables. Here's the shopping basket, Doris. Oh. Now, hold out your paw. Oh. This little piggy went to market. Oh, oh don't worry. It's your tickling. This little piggy is dead at home. <laughs> Doris, stop it. <gasps> All right, oh, I won't oh, tickle you anymore oh, if you'll sing this little piggy oh, with me. Oh, yes, 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 I'll sing, I promise. little piggy went to market and, and this little piggy stayed at home. This little piggy had roast beef and this little piggy had none. And this little piggy cried wee 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 all the way home. This little piggy went to market And this little piggy stayed at home This little piggy had roast beef And this little piggy had none And this little piggy cried wee 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 All the way home <laughs> you, You're only supposed to tickle when you sing wee 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 all the way home <laughs> Alright, here we go this little piggy went to market And this little piggy stayed at home This little piggy had roast beef And this little piggy had none And this little piggy cried wee 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 All the way home <laughs> <laughs> There. Now, are we ready to go to Magic Mountain Market? Will there be a jumble sale there? A jumble sale? Yes, you know, when everybody brings old clothes and things they don't want and other people buy them. Of course there won't be a jumble sale. It's a market. Oh, what a pity. Why? I was just thinking of the lovely time we had at Jane's jumble sale. One morning, Doris and I heard the strangest bang, bang, banging coming from upstairs. What's going on? I cried. I think Jane must be up to something, said Doris. Let's go and see. We ran all the way upstairs to the very top of the house. Jane! Jane! Where are you? Up here in the attic, shouted Jane. Whatever are you doing in the attic? I said. Collecting things, said Jane. Haven't you seen the poster outside? Poster? I said. Come on, Doris, let's go and look. On the side of the house was a huge white sheet. On it was written, Grand Jumble Sale. One o'clock today, everyone welcome. A jumble sale? Cool! I said. Let's go and tell everyone. Off we went to look for Leroy and Digby and Trevor and Dotty. But there was no one to be seen. Then we found ourselves beside the lollipop tree. Grandpa's usually somewhere around here. Let's say the spell, I said. Grandpa Wizard, come and see Morris and Doris by the lollipop tree. And with a big flash, there was Grandpa standing right beside us. Hello, hamsters, he said. Are we all ready to go to the jumble sale? How did you know, I said. <laughs> the wind told me, chuckled Grandpa. When we got back home, Jane was in the garden. She was standing behind a table covered with old books and toys, but there was nobody else to be seen. Thank goodness you're here, said Jane. My jumble sale's been open for hours, but no one has come to visit it. You need something to attract everyone's attention, said Grandpa. You need a little bit of magic. Grandpa took a piece of hair from his beard and blew it into the air. <sighs> the little white clouds above began to float down. I want all you clouds to spell out the words Jumble Sail, said Grandpa. 
Slowly, the clouds began to move. Soon, there was a huge message in the sky. Let's wait, said Grandpa. I'm sure somebody will come now. A whole hour passed, but still nobody arrived. I think we need a little bit more magic, said Grandpa. Jane, close your eyes and wish very hard for the thing you would most like to see at your jumble sale. And Morris and Doris... You say this spell with me. Rat-a-tat-tat, fiddle-dee-dee, -dee. please can we have what Jane wants to see? Suddenly, the sky was filled with lots and lots of fireworks. There were bright, ah. coloured sparks shooting everywhere. Oh, Jane, I cried, I thought you were going to wish for people to come to your jumble sale. Oh, but I'd much rather have fireworks laughed Jane. So we all watched the fireworks and when they were finished we helped Jane to pack up her jumble. Then we all went inside to have tea and cakes. Oh, wait for me, Morris. Hurry up, Doris, or oh. we'll never get the shopping home. But my shopping bag's so heavy. So is mine. But look at me, I'm running. Well, you'll be tired out long before we get home. Slow coach. You know, Morris, we're just like the hare and the tortoise. Who? Listen to the story. The hare and the tortoise. Hare was always laughing at tortoise because he was so slow. Ha! <laughs> you take so long to get up in the morning, he said. Look at me. I leap out of bed, go for an early morning run and have my breakfast before you even put your nose outside your shell. <laughs> Maybe, said Tortoise. But you waste your time chattering and annoying other people. Why don't you do something useful instead of making me feel slow and stupid? But Hare kept bounding away and coming back every five minutes to tease Tortoise. At last, Tortoise said, Right, I've had enough of this. Tomorrow we'll have a race, and I bet you I'll win. <laughs> Hare threw himself on the ground, laughing fit to burst and waving his long back legs in the air. <laughs> you, he gasped, race me! <laughs> Now that really is too much. <laughs> well, said Tortoise, if you're afraid of losing... And he shrugged his shoulders and began slowly, slowly to move away. Uh, wait, yelled Hare, leaping three feet in the air. I, uh, I didn't mean I wouldn't race you. Of course I will. I, I just meant it. <laughs> it won't be much of a race. <laughs> For me. <laughs> right, said Tortoise. We'll meet here at twelve o'clock tomorrow, race to the end of the field, round the farm, down the lane, and back again. I'll ask Rabbit to make sure the race is fair. Hare rushed off to tell all the other animals about the big race. He was so busy that he didn't have time to come back and annoy Tortoise for the rest of the day. So Tortoise spent a very happy afternoon talking and drinking tea with his friend Badger. Next day, the animals gathered to watch the big race. Oh, oh, oh dear me, I feel, oh, oh, so nervous, said a field mouse, rubbing elbows with another field mouse. Poor Tortoise doesn't have a hope, but I would so love him to win. It would show that great windbag of a hare a thing or two. Well, you never know, said Snail. Tortoise always says he may be slow, but he gets there in the end. Well, you would say that, wouldn't you, Snail, said the field mouse. You're even slower than Tortoise. All I can think of is the teasing he'll get when Hare wins the race. All the animals cheered as Tortoise arrived to take his place. Hare appeared in one leap, as if from nowhere. Everyone held their breath as Rabbit held up the flag. Are you ready? he said. 
right. On your marks, get set, go! Hare was off like an arrow with Tortoise plodding behind. In minutes, Hare had reached the end of the field. He paused and looked back over his shoulder. Tortoise was a tiny speck in the distance, moving slowly, slowly forward. Hare was not even out of breath. <laughs> he chuckled to himself. What's the point of rushing? Tortoise will never catch me up. I might as well sit down and enjoy the sun for a while. <sighs> he stretched himself out in the long grass and closed his eyes. In no time, he was fast asleep. Meanwhile, Tortoise plodded on, never stopping, never slowing down, and never going any faster. Hour after hour went by, and still Hare slept on, his whiskers twitching as he dreamt of how the other animals would cheer him. Hour after hour went by, and still Tortoise kept slowly, slowly creeping forward, round the farm, down the lane, and back again. On and on he plodded, until the field mice started to jig about. All the animals cheered and cheered. Tortoise was near the finishing line. Hare woke with a start. He leapt in the air, only to see Tortoise cross the finishing line. Rabbit's flag dropped. Tortoise had won. Hare dashed over to join the animals who were crowding round Tortoise. Well, he said, you'd never have managed it if I hadn't dropped off. Everyone knows I'm faster than you. That may be so, said Tortoise. But you didn't win the race, did you? Remember, I may be slow, but I get there in the end. Tortoise went home with Rabbit for a special tea of lettuce sandwiches, carrot cake and mint jelly. And Hare never made fun of him again. Doris, have you seen Spot anywhere? Um. Why? Because Denise is going to sing a song about a dog and she needs someone to make doggy noises. Well, I think Spot's at the very far end of the Magic Garden. Um, couldn't we pretend to be Spot? <gasps> oh, yes. And then we can make all the woof-woof noises which go with the song. <laughs> short and his tail cut long. Oh, where, oh, where is he? Woof, woof! Woof, woof! Woof! Woof, woof! Woof! Woof, woof! Woof, woof! Oh, where, oh, where has my little dog gone? Oh, where, oh, where can he be? Woof, woof! With his ears cut short and his tail cut long. Simon to Simple Simon, show me first your penny. Said Simple Simon to the pieman, indeed I have not any. Simple Simon met a pieman going to the fair. Said Simple Simon to 
the pieman, let me taste your ware. Said the pieman to Simple Simon, show me first your penny. Said Simple Simon to the pieman, indeed I have not any. What a funny song. Hick. I beg your pardon? I said, what a hick, hick. Oh, oh Doris, I've got hiccups. Oh, let me slap you on the back. That should stop them. Uh, oh, not so hard. Hick. I wonder how you do get rid of hiccups. I think Denise's story has got some good ideas. Hick. Listen. Frosby's Hiccups. Frosby the Frog lived by the big pond. He had a boat made out of a big lily leaf, and he loved to go out sailing in it. Late one evening, Frosby was sailing in the lily boat when he opened his mouth to yawn. But instead of a yawn, out came the strangest noise Frosby had ever heard. <coughs> oh, dear, oh, said Frosby. What a funny noise I'm making. He hopped up and down to see if the noise would go away. But no, still he hiccuped and hiccuped. I wonder if Frieda the dragonfly knows how to stop it, hiccuped Frosby. I'll go to her house and see. <coughs> Frieda the dragonfly lived in an oak tree not too far from Frosby's pond. Frosby called to her from the bottom of the tree. Frieda! Uh Frida, uh, uh, come quickly! Uh, uh, I need your help! Whatever is the matter? squeaked Frida, flying out of the tree. Listen, said Frosby. They waited for a moment, then... <coughs> oh dear, said Frida. You've got the hiccups. Is it uh, uh, bad? asked Frosby nervously. No, said Frida. Stand on your head and drink some water. Oh, that sounds easy. Let's try it. So Frosby and Frida went back to the pond. Frosby took a bluebell flower and filled it with water. Now, stand on your head, said Frida, and drink. Taking great care not to spill any of the water, Frosby stood on his head. Frosby and Frida were very quiet. Then, suddenly... <coughs> oh, no, said Frosby. It hasn't stopped. Let's go and see Felix the field mouse, said Frida. I'm sure he'll know how to stop it. Frosby hopped and Frida flew through the wood and soon they reached Felix's nest. Felix popped his head out of his nest. Oh, yes, he said sleepily. Oh, what do you want? Please help me, said Frosby. I've caught the hiccups and they won't stop. That's easy, said Felix the field mouse. All you need is someone to scare you. That'll stop the hiccups. Will you do it, asked Frosby. Yes, said Felix. Now, close your eyes. Frosby shut his eyes tightly. Are you ready? said Felix. Yes. Right then, open your eyes. Frosby opened his eyes and began to laugh. Poor Felix had tried to pull a strange face to frighten Frosby, but he looked so funny that Frosby and Frida could only laugh. They were laughing so hard that none of them noticed that Frosby had stopped hiccuping. Hey, listen, shouted Frosby. I'm not hiccuping anymore. Thank you, Felix. And he hopped, skipped and jumped for joy. You're great, said Frida the dragonfly, giving Felix a kiss. Come on, said Frosby. As a special treat, I'm going to take you both out for a sail in my lily boat. 
So the three friends climbed into the lily boat and sailed up and down the pond. And they all knew that the next time anyone caught hiccups, all they had to do was find someone to make them laugh. Laughing! Yes, that's the best way to stop hiccups. Well, I don't know if it's the best way, but it's certainly easier than standing on your head. It wasn't my fault I fell in the sink. Well, you shouldn't have stood on your head on the draining board. I was trying to read the shopping list, which you'd let upside down on the windowsill. Oh, Morris, you are silly. The shopping list. That reminds me, it's rhyme time. The shopping list. Children at the baker's. Buying loaves of bread. They could buy a dozen rolls or sticky buns instead. See them at the fish shop. Had a cod and place. But still their shopping list is long. So on and on they race. Running past the toy shop. Look, a teddy bear. Pop him in the shopping bag. He'd be so happy there. Now they want some flowers. From the florist shop. Daffodils and roses, please. We haven't time to stop. Vegetables are written on the shopping list. And so they buy a cauliflower. Now, what else have they missed? The shopping bag is heavy. See what it contains. Everything except the meat. It's shopping time again. Now, where's that naughty hamster? I wanted him to pop out and buy a present for Jane. Oh, never mind. Knowing Morris, he'd probably come home with something quite unsuitable. Although, you can never tell with presents. Listen to Nigel's story. Mrs Jonesy's present. <laughs> One hot summer day, Mr Jones went shopping to buy a birthday present for Mrs Jones. He knew that what she wanted most of all was an orange tree for her garden. So, Mr Jones went straight to the garden centre and bought a beautiful orange tree with five juicy oranges growing on it. As he carried the tree home, he passed Mrs McGinty, the ribbon seller. What a beautiful tree you have there, Mr Jones, she said. Those oranges look delicious. Yes, he replied. The tree is a birthday present for my wife. But why don't you try an orange? And he picked one and gave it to her. Oh, thank you, she said. And in return, she gave Mr Jones a pretty pink ribbon to tie round the tree. <laughs> A little further on, the baker called out, Good morning, Mr Jones. That's a beautiful tree you have. Those oranges look so juicy. Mr Jones gave the baker an orange and said, The tree is a birthday present for my wife, but she won't mind if you have an orange. Thank you, said the baker, taking the orange. Here, put this on the tree for your wife. And he gave Mr Jones a cake with candles on it. The fishmonger was outside his shop when Mr Jones walked past. Hello, Mr Jones, he said. That's a lovely tree you have, and those oranges make me feel quite thirsty. Have one, said Mr Jones. The tree is a birthday present for my wife, but I know she'd like you to have an orange. You're so kind, said the fishmonger. Here, put this fish on the tree for your wife. As Mr Jones walked past Flo, the flower seller, she called out, Those oranges look so sweet and juicy. They're a birthday present for my wife, but have this one, he said. She won't mind, and there'll still be one left. So Flo, the flower seller, took the orange and gave Mr Jones a big bunch of flowers. Mr Jones tied them to the tree. At last, Mr Jones arrived back home. He knocked very loudly on the front door and sang, 
Happy birthday! What a surprise Mrs Jones had when she saw Mr Jones standing there holding the orange tree, tied up in a pretty pink ribbon. Hanging on the tree were one juicy ripe orange, a birthday cake with candles on it, a sparkling fresh fish and a big bunch of flowers. <laughs> Mrs Jones tied the pink ribbon around her gardening hat and planted the orange tree. Then Mr and Mrs Jones had a birthday feast and when they had finished, they shared the last orange. Hello, Doris. Morris, where have you been? I wanted you to go and buy a present for Jane. I've done better than that. What? I've bought a present for you. Oh, Morris, mm. you are kind. What is it? A thimble. A thimble? Yes, but don't worry. Next week I'll buy you some needles and thread and some materials to sew with. And soon your thimble will be really, really useful. <laughs> You know what your trouble is? You can never buy just one thing at a time. Do you remember what happened the day we both wanted eggs for breakfast? Yes, I jolly well do. Let's tell everyone. We wanted some eggs for our breakfast, so we went to the nearest shop. And when we had bought two little brown eggs, we found that we couldn't stop. So we bought two egg cups, we bought two spoons, we bought two saucers and we found that soon. We needed a saucepan, we needed a stove to cook our eggy eggies on by Jove. We needed a table, we needed some chairs, we spent our money like millionaires and all because we woke up to say, I would like a breakfast egg today. One more time! We bought two egg cups, we bought two spoons, we bought two saucers and we found that soon. We needed a saucepan, we needed a stove to cook our eggy eggies on by Jove. We needed a table, we needed some chairs, we spent our money like millionaires and all because we woke up to say, I would like a breakfast egg today. Bye, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.